Today we will study and discuss the biogeochemical cycles, its patterns and their bas basic types. In ecology, it is extremely important to study not only the relationship between organisms and the environment, but also understand the basic non-living environment in relation to their to the organisms. The two, ecosy the two ecosystem subdivisions are the biotic and the abiotic, and they co-evolve and influence the behavior of each other. Out of 90 odd elements found in the nature, around 30 to 40 are known to be required by the living organisms. But now we know that it is not only 30 to 40 uh, mit mineral uh, elements that are being required. There are, are almost 90 elements and other synthetic materials which are also being utilized by the living organisms. And we are harvesting them according to our needs and our according to our uses. Some elements, for example, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen are needed in very small or even very uh, minute amounts. And these elements have been divided into two categories, essential elements and non-essential elements. Essential elements are those which show definite biogeochemical cycles regardless of the need and they are extremely compulsory for life. Non-essential elements are not compulsory for life they are less closely coupled with organisms and often flow along with the essential elements because of their chemical affinity. Bio refers to the living organisms, geo to the rocks, air and water of the earth. So geochemistry is concerned with the chemical composition of the earth and with the exchange of elements between different parts of the earth's crust, its atmosphere, its oceans, rivers and other water bodies biogeochemical cycles. The chemical elements including all the essential elements of protoplasm tend to circulate in the biosphere in characteristic paths from environment to organisms and back to the environment. These are more or less circular paths and they are known as biogeochemical cycles. Nutrient cycles. The movement of those elements in organic compounds that are essential to life can be conveniently designated as nutrient cycles. Each cycle can be subdivided into two compartments, one is reservoir pool and the other is labile pool. Reservoir pool is the large slow moving generally non-biological component whereas the labile pool is small but more active portion that is exchanging moving back and forth rapidly between organisms and their immediate environment. This figure shows a biogeochemical cycle superimposed on simplified energy flow diagram to show how one way flow of energy drives the cycle of the matter. Elements in nature are almost never homogeneously distributed nor are they present in the same chemical form throughout the ecosystem. The reservoir pool, that portion which is chemically or physically remote from the organisms is indicated by the box labeled nutrient pool, whereas the cycling portion is designated by the circle going from autotrophs to heterotrophs and back again. Sometimes reservoir pool is called the unavailable pool and the active cycling pool is known as available pool. Superimposition of biochemical cycle upon energy flow has been shown in the previous slide in which reservoir pool was also known as uh, nutrient pool uh, is also referred as unavailable pool whereas the circle with imports and exports of energy is shown by the cyclic movement of the nutrients between heterotrophs and autotrophs is also referred as available pool. So unavailable does not mean permanently unavailable as there are slow fluxes, there is a slow movement between permanent and non-permanent reservoirs. Relative size of the reservoir pool is important to know uh, to assess the impact of the human activities. Uh, generally the smallest pools will be the first affected by the changes in the fluxes. Available pool is important to know to assess the quality of the qu soil quality for the plant growth, for example, if you consider agronomists, they routinely measure the fertility of the soil by estimating the concentration of uh, exchangeable nutrients that usually small part of the total soil nutrient content 
that is quickly available to the plants. Elements in nature are not homogeneously distributed nor are present in the same chemical form throughout the ecosystem. Biogeochemical cycles fall in two categories, number one uh, gaseous types and the number two are sedimentary types. In the gaseous types you can take the example of local increases in the carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide production by oxidation or combustion which tend to be quickly dissipated by air movement and increased output compensated for by increased plant uptake and carbonate formation in the sea. Gaseous type cycles with large atmospheric reservoirs are considered to be well buffered globally because of a large capacity to adjust themselves or adjust to a change. However, there are definite limits to self adjustment capacity of of even uh, even a large reservoir as uh, as an atmosphere the uh, the examples are carbon nitrogen and oxygen sedimentary cycles are uh, basically uh, those which involve elements such as phosphorus or iron tend to be much more much less cybernetically controlled and more easily disrupted by the local disturbances or perturbations because the great bulk of material is in a relatively inactive and immobile reservoir in the earth's crust. So as a result some portion of the exchangeable material tends to get lost for long periods of time and, uh, and uh, when downhill movement is more rapid than the uphill movement return. Um, return or re recycling mechanisms are mostly biotic in nature. So if the utilization would be more and the return to the nature would be less or return to the reservoir would be less, it means that downhill movement is more rapid than that of the uphill movement. As we have previously discussed that human beings are, uh, not, are not only using 40 elements but all other elements uh, and uh, synthetic materials as well. So the over harvesting and the an increase in the population and as a result over harvesting leads to disturbance in the biogeochemical cycles. And uh, another point is that we do careful harvesting of the sediments which leads to pollution and it severely stresses our natural ecosystem. So being an ecologist we need to conserve our natural resources. And for that we need to make an effort to make our acyclic processes more cyclic so that the, they, they, so that we can achieve ecological balance and for that pur purpose uh, from where we should begin with it is the water conservation and recycling. Uh, water conservation and recycling is a good start to control nutrients that move along with water. For this purpose we will be uh, uh, we will be studying uh, other biogeochemical cycles that will be gaseous in nature or those will be or sedimentary in nature uh, in our, in our next, next lecture. Uh, if you have any questions you may ask it on the same forum. Thank you so much.